All right, time for another fish room tour. Hey YouTube, Brian here coming at you again with a, another uh, kind of monthly fish room tour. Um, thought I would just go through all the tanks and kind of show you what's been going on. Uh, we're going to start upstairs today in my office here. This is the 90 gallon planted um, discus and harlequin rasbora tank at this time. Um, this tank has uh, been recovering nicely. Um, it wasn't doing too hot the last few months, but um, I've been working on uh, getting the balance back and uh, the Blix has really taken off. Um, the AR Mini is starting to bounce back. The only problem I've got still is the storage and repins. Um, from far away they don't look too bad, but when you get up close they're really kind of ratty and, and stuff. Um, they get that kind of a weird thing. I've talked to a lot of people every so often. Um, some people say yank it all and start over. Other people say wait it out. Uh, other people say trim it. Uh, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. Um, I'm thinking about possibly doing a different type of carpet anyway, so for the time being I'm just leaving it as is. Um, but yeah, other than that, things are going pretty good in this tank. Um, got some Pogo Erectus over here as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what's going on there. Um, over here is the 150 gallon discus. Um, this one I think I showed it in my last video, but I tore out um, all the plants that were in it. I just threw in a couple of Amazon swords for the time being. But what my plans are with this, um, it's going to go out into my living room. And then the 125 out there is going to come into here. But I'm going to keep the discus in this tank. But what I'm going to do is pull out all the Eco Complete and uh, just do a sand bed. And I'm highly considering to getting a 3D background for this. Um, just got to figure out how I'm going to pay for that and if it'll work with these. Uh, this tank has the, um, the sump over the overflow boxes or whatever in it from before I bought it. And so I may have to yank those out or figure out if the 3D background would, would fit over those. So, but yeah, not much else is going on. This is just the wild discus, um, wild discus, um, three three different kinds I believe um, and yeah um, Cardinal Tetras that's about it really um, down below is the uh, red cherry shrimp tank I've been working on this tank and the two others that I'm about to show you up in the office as far as getting the water parameters back in check um, i would gotten I don't know if I'd say lazy or more just ignorant. I kind of stopped testing and stuff like that. And um, the TDS got way out of hand. So um, I'm getting these back down into um, areas that are that are good for the Neos that I keep up here. Um, below the 90 is the yellow Neo tank. Got some more of those coming next week too. Um, for whatever reason, these things, I've just had real real trouble getting them to breed. I mean, they have bred. I've seen shrimplets in there. i talked to other people, too, and they say for whatever reason, yellow neos are one of the hardest neo to breed. So I found a good deal on Facebook. I wasn't really looking, but it just popped up, so I told the guy I'd pick them up from him, so we'll see what happens. But that's what's going on there. And then this is the uh, the uh, blue pearl tank. They're doing good. They breed. Uh, they don't breed like a ton. It doesn't seem like compared to like my crystal reds. Like here's a few babies. I think. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But uh, I'm probably getting rid of these. If anyone's looking for some uh, uh, blue pearls, hit me up. There's probably 30 at least in here. Um, I'll work out a deal with somebody on that. Um, we'll move out here. Uh, the 125 here in the uh, in the living room. This still has the loaches in it, and it also still has the uh, the motas, the uh, red tiger moda gwens. Um, I'm down to three. I had five. There's one dominant one in here that seems to uh, basically want to take everybody else out. 
they're real skittish too. Every time I get up close, they pretty much freak out. But uh, this is the guy, I think it's a, a male, that's kind of been taking everybody out. Um, I've got another male, I think it's a male, about the same size up there. The two of them are always sparring. Then there's a smaller um, one in here too, I'm not sure, but I think the two bigger ones are both males, if I'm not mistaken. Um, look, working on uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with these guys, uh, maybe get a female. Um, but I don't know a lot about them yet, so I'm still learning. i got to kind of figure out a little bit more as far as sexing goes to know exactly what I've got. I just haven't put a lot of time into these guys and doing a lot of research. Um, on, on what they are and, and what, uh, you know, how to sex them, things like that, uh, just by looks. So, um, that's about it for this tank. We'll go downstairs now and I'll show you guys uh, the main fish room. Uh, right in front of you here are the two um, Spectabilis tanks, Kakatea Spectabilis. Up on top are my F1s. Uh, they spawned sometime in the last couple of weeks um, good good clutch of eggs and then the next morning they were gone um, and then he's been pretty hard on her since but she's she hides when you can see she's a little beat up but she hides when she needs to and now lately he hasn't been hard on her and she's been over by him almost like trying to I mean look at her doing a lot of head shaking there and stuff she's been in this pot she was doing like dry runs like she was laying eggs the other day. It seems like she's wanting to get him to spawn now. Um, her tube's not even down though. He's just beautiful. This fish is, I just love this fish. He's a uh, really nice looking specimen. So uh, down below is the lone male wild cut. This is uh, the wild cut that I got from Raps. Uh, the female, I can't remember if I covered this in my last video, but he killed the female one weekend when I was gone. Came home and she was dead and half eaten. So um, I'm moving this guy on as soon as I can find someone that's interested in him. I've got no use for him and I need the tank space. So that'll be kind of what's going on there. He's a cool fish, cool to watch. Full grown, old guy. Yeah. So um, behind us here then are uh, up on top. These are the two 75 gallon stacks. Um, up on top is the uh, Amphilophus citronellus Midas cichlid tank. I got a male and a female in here. Um, of course they're both hiding right now. You can kind of see through the tube there. Female's a creamsicle. The male's orange. They spawned once. Um, but then ate the eggs, um, so I'm hoping for some um, for some spawning from these guys soon. And once I uh, get rid of the wild cast, wild cast spec, I think they're gonna go in his tank. 125 gallon fat boy. Got a couple of birchers in here, uh, just two regular um, uh, Senegal polypterus, and then one. Uh, I always forget how to pronounce it. And Endolachiri, I believe. Let's see if I can find them quick. Doesn't seem to be out now, but they're fun. Um, yeah. And then the Trimac tank down below. They spawned for me once, and um, I actually pulled some fry. After I pulled the fry, though, he went ape shit on her and um, beat her up pretty good. I just pulled the divider yesterday, and she's already barred up. Um, been really showing a lot of interest in him. And they seem to be getting along good so far, so um, we'll see how that goes. She's still missing a little bit of her finnage in, in the back there. You can see from when he beat her up pretty good. But, um, yeah, um, I think me pulling the fry is what caused it. So um, next time they spawn, I'll, I'll probably just leave the fry in there. I didn't pull them all either. I pulled like half, and it still caused problems. So at least I think that's what caused the problem because it happened like the next day. So yeah, that's these guys. <clears throat> we'll head over here. Um, the newest addition as far as tank-wise goes is, uh, this is 180 gallon now down here. Um, it used to be a 125 and uh, it leaked, so I got rid of it. And uh, 
Got a 180 and moved over uh, Thorson and Maggie to this tank. Look at that guy. Lighting is not real good to see his full color, but uh, so they're settling in. She's been staying down under this rock quite a bit, um, but she's still looking good. He got a little scrape when he freaked out when I tried to catch him the first the first shot at it, uh, but he's healing up nicely. So they're gonna love this extra space. Um, but yeah, they've only been in here for less than a week. I think it was just last weekend that I swapped them over. So, they're looking good. I, I didn't realize how big he was. I mean, he certainly he's not even half of what he'll be full grown yet, but you know, you see these guys in tanks and then when you actually net them and kind of have them in your hands when you're moving them, you realize how, how big they actually are. He's starting to really get thick and uh, you know, he's getting close to 12 inches, may even be, I didn't measure him, but uh, it was cool to have him, have him uh, when I moved the tank and kind of hold him, in, hold him in my hand. So up above here is um, my uh, F1 male who I've named Halen and the female who I still don't have a name for. She's a wildcat that I got from Raps. They've got their second spawn now. Um, not a huge spawn, kind of like the first time, but um, you know it is what it is. They're they're learning. She likes to just freak out when you get near. She's really good at protecting them. He's kind of like ah eh, whatever. So um, yeah, so that's cool though that they spawned. Depending on when I put this video up, I will. I've got a video too from the day that the eggs were hatching to Wigglers um, of of her. I kind of did like a long, I just put it on a tripod and filmed her as she's moving the eggs from this rock here where they were to back behind that rock. So I'll get that up at some point. Uh, you may have already seen it by the time you see this or else it may come after. Not sure when I'll, when I'll put each up. Uh, moving over here, we've got the Feste. There's the male, female. She's colored up real nice. Um, they have not spawned again, although she's been showing signs of it, her tubes down a little bit. Um, at least it was yesterday, now it's really not. Oh yeah, it is a little bit, I guess. Um, so they're doing good, looking forward to seeing them spawn again. Um, but really just enjoying these two, they've done really good together. Haven't had any problems really. Uh, just really digging these guys. These guys may come up into my office when I do that discus tank move. Still not deciding what will come upstairs and, and go in that tank that replaces the discus tank in my office. Uh, down below here we're looking at the uh, Amphilophus lion's eye. I've got three of them. This one here took a real beating to the tail. Hoping that will grow back. But they're doing good, living together, just trying to sort out uh, everything. I uh, haven't had any real problems with them other than uh, one little fight. And that was when I actually had them mixed in with the Midas, because I needed some space. Um, so I'm not sure if it was a Midas or these guys, one of these guys that did that tail. Uh, albino, uh, I believe it's a Sailfin Pleco. So yeah. Um, down here we've got uh, just a grow out tank with some RTMs, some Mayans, and a couple of Umbies. Um, fry tanks, grow out tanks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Umbies, Trimax, Spectabilis. Um, these are for sale right now. They're one to two inches if anyone's looking for some Spectabilis. And uh, more Umbies. Up above here is, I got uh, five Bean Eye in here now. Rio Panuco, I believe, that's how you pronounce it. I'm treating them. They are showing some signs of uh, parasites. So um, we'll see what happens there. But they've been doing good, haven't lost them. They haven't lost any appetite or anything, just showing some signs of, uh, um, you know, they've got the white stringy poop. So um, I'm treating them with the, uh, with the Parasite Sniper that you can get through aquatic support systems. Um, it's a product uh, that uh, you can only get through aquatic support systems, so look into that if you're having problems. Um, over here, 
Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Redis Latus up here. Full of attitude always. Just wants to bite my finger off. Real cool fish. Love this guy. His female um, is pretty much hides. He beats her pretty good. Um, I've got, I haven't divided them, but I've got this uh, pot where I've knocked out the top so that she can get in and he can't. But she likes to hide back here more than anything behind that pot, so. Anyway, this guy's really sweet. All right, um, shrimp tanks along here, four of them. Uh, crystal reds, still breeding like crazy. Having a lot of fun with these guys. Crystal blacks, you can see a little shrimplet there. Should be able to at least next to the big, next to this one. Um, there's another shrimplet. Had some ups and downs with these. They bred, but um, they've also, a lot of them have died off, a lot of the adults, and... Ooh, check that out. Oh, I thought I saw... It's just a cool picture, a cool shot of this shrimp back there. Anyway, um, I found out that um, my TDS was way too high for these. I was thinking that they that it needed to be higher than what it was. And so that's one of the problems that was causing them to die off. Another problem I'm thinking is that um, I was using too much of a supplement that I had previously been using. So I kind of cut that out completely uh, with the help of my buddy Daryl, um, DET Aquarium. Kind of solved that problem, and the and the deaths have pretty much stopped, so that's good. Same thing was going on with the higher grade CRS over here, and uh, you know, as you can see, shrimplet. They're breeding, but they were also dying, the adults. So um, we've pretty much uh, got that problem licked. So thanks to Daryl, DET Aquarium. Um, if you want to want some really good uh, videos on shrimp keeping, go check out Daryl's channel. Again, it's DET Aquarium. Check it out on YouTube. I'm pumped though that both of these tanks have, that we, we finally had some successful breeding going on, so that's a positive sign. Uh, next door here is the Red Rillies. They've been doing good, nothing really to report other than just got a bunch of them. They're doing what they do. Looks like I got either a molt or a dead one back there, so I'll have to deal with that. Um, up here is what I have left of the Royal Blue Tigers. Got some nice Royal Blue Tigers from um, Lup Diesel. Check out his uh, YouTube channel too uh, if you're into shrimp keeping or want to learn more. Um, again, I had the water parameters way too high, so out of the 15 I bought from him, or got, actually we did a trade, I sent him a bunch of mosses. And uh, he sent me 15 of these nice guys. I'm down to five to seven of them. I had some deaths, but I think I've got everything uh, stabilized now, so we'll be good to go there. And then down below are the carbon rillies. They're doing good. Kind of some different qualities and grades, whatever you want to say. Um, these are bred too, like here's a shrimplet. So, um, yeah, that's doing well. And then the last, the, uh, the last, um, tank is down below here. Um, these are my, um, heterospilus that I just got a couple of weeks ago. Um... I just changed out the gravel in this tank last night, so they're a little skittish right now, but they've been doing real good. Um, this is a fish I've wanted for a long time, and I finally, uh, one of my buddies, James Randall, um, had some available, um, so I was able to pick some up a couple of weeks ago. Actually, his dad, Bob, had them available. So, um, yeah. 
These guys are coming along nicely. This pair had spawned before I bought them, so we know that they're a proven pair, so that's nice. So just kind of waiting for these guys to really get settled in and start doing their thing again. So other than that, that's about all I've got right now. I'll give you another look at Halen. Um, thanks again for watching the video, everybody, and thanks for all you know everybody that subscribes and checks out these videos and comments on them and everything. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, make sure that you go check out Aquatic Support Community on Facebook. Um, great group of people. Um, give Southern Delight Fish Food a try. Um, you can buy it through Aquatic Support Community. They're the, uh, the only um, bulk sellers of, aquatic, or of uh, Southern Delight. It's great food. Feed it to all my fish. And make sure you check out all the links below for the um, YouTube channels of all the members of Team Aquatic Support. Alright guys, thanks. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.